Hello and welcome to my review of Tales from the Dark Side. It all comes out on the wash. Vince Edwards is Harry Groper. James Hahn the legend is Chow Teen. Act 1. A Chinese teenager walks around the corner of a shop and almost walks into a businessman. The man, Carl Groper, is looking around and notices the window of the store which gives the name of the establishment as Chow Teen. He goes in. No one is at the counter. So Groper goes up to the counter and knocks on the counter. At first, there's no response. After he knocks on the counter a second time and asks hello, Chow Teen comes to the counter. Looking very ecstatic, he apologizes for making Grope away, but insists that he had a very good reason to. He says he was watching a show called Wheel of Fate and a woman was about to win $100,000. Grope interrupts him, asking if he is at Chow Teen's, and Chow seems surprised. Grope does not want to know about the woman. Grope again interrupts Chow Teen and requests a special service. Chow Teen's demeanor changes when he asks Groper to specify how special he wants his service to be. Groper explains that he was sent by Sam Launchmont, who Chow Teen recognizes as a loyal customer. Chow Teen goes on to explain that the special service is very expensive, and when Groper insists he can afford it, Chow requests to see his financial statement. Chow Teen inspects the financial statement and then inspects Groper's laundry. He seems to have no problem with what he sees, and he hands Groper his list of prices. Groper remarks on the expense of the service but assures Chow Teen that the price is worth it if Chow Teen can do what Launchmont said he could do. Chow Teen asserts that he, they can speak freely and that is when the nature of the special service is revealed. Groper says that Launchmont told that him that Chow Teen has the ability to wash away sins from clothes. Chow Teen tells him that this is so and that his model is at Chow Teen's laundry everything comes out in the wash. Groper seeks clarity by assurance that washing away sins will also clear him of any guilt in his actions. He wants to be sure that he can do absolutely anything and not feel guilty or remorseful about it. Chow Teen assures Groper that he will sleep the sleep of a newborn. When Groper begins to ask how Chow Teen does what he does, Chow Teen interrupts him and begins to tell Groper the terms of their agree arrangement. First, Groper must never ask how Chow Teen's laundry works. Second, Groper must never return to the laundry and never call Chow Teen. He states that they will deliver and pick up according to his needs and not at to ask how he will know. Groper wants the laundry to go through his office so his wife will not know about it. Groper seems pleased that Chow Teen is okay with this. But when he mentions that they have a deal, Chow Teen makes sure that Groper knows they do not have a deal, they have an arrangement, and payment must be prompt in cash because he does not like credit cards. Chow Teen gives Groper the price list and remarks on his vanity about having his picture on the list. When Groper mentions that he's a fan of promotion, Chow Teen tells him that he is not. The other condition to continue using the laundry is to not tell anyone. And Chow is surprised that Launchmont mentioned it. Still, Groper agrees not to tell a soul about the special service. And Chow Ting seems pleased and they shake hands. Act 2. In his office, Groper gets a call from Santa Launchmont. He thanks Launchmont for telling him about the laundry service. Launchmont is confused until Groper mentions Chow Ting, which causes Launchmont some distress. Sam is concerned that Groper told Chow Ting that it was he who gave Groper the information. Groper tries to tell Sam, assure him, that Chow Teen was happily about the referral. Groper promises not to tell anyone and Sam disconnects the call. Groper is confused as to why Launchmont doesn't appreciate the thanks. Picking up Chow Teen's price list, Groper wonders just again how Chow Teen knows when to pick up the laundry. Groper's secretary and Ginger announces that his 10 year old son, Marvin, has called him Collect, to which Groper appears proud. He takes the call and tells the secretary to come in and update the charts. While taking the call from his son, the effects of being guilt free begin to show. Marvin is upset that his friend Billy told him that Groper's company kills baby seals and make coats. Groper assures his son that fur looks better on people than on a seal. He tells his son to act like his son and stop sniffling. He says to Ginger surprise, Groper tells his son to bring home a piece of Billy's nose and he would double his allowance. Upon hanging up the phone, Groper starts taking his shirt off, noticing Ginger's surprise look. She tells him she has never seen him like this. Groper continues undressing and musing that Billy's dad must have put him up to this. He thinks that Billy's father had Billy tell his son about the seal to drive a wrench between Groper and Marvin. Upon leaving, the secretary tells Groper that the weirdo Chow Teen calls and he had to double his prices again because of increased labor costs. This seems to indicate that because of the laundry service's power to rid Groper of sin and guilt, that he's doing more unsavory things. When Ginger tries to refer Groper to another dry cleaner, he orders her to leave. Groper does many other bad things, all the while changing his shirts. He orders thorny flowers to be sent to his wife along with divorce papers the day after her birthday. 
He is still upset about Billy telling his son about the steals. He blames on Billy's father and has Billy's father killed. Within the same two minutes, he also calls up Sam Longspun's wife and sets up a date and a sexual rendezvous with her. Grover mentions how the first time in his life he likes himself for, being, for a brief moment he considers calling off the hit on Billy's father but accepts the fact that murder builds character and Shao will take care of everything. Grover then notices that he has a lot of laundry piling up. He gets upset that Chao Ting keeps raising his prices and decides to call Chao Ting. He almost reconsiders knowing that calling breaks one of Chao Ting's rules, but asserts that since he is paying the bills, Chao Ting will have to fall in line. He calls Chao Ting and leaves a voicemail. Insisting on the delivery, he immediately realizes his mistake. Act 3. Groper's office is full of long, dirty laundry. He is on the phone with the police concerning the murder of Billy's father. After the call, he decides that he wants to go on a date with Billy's widowed mother. And as his secretary sends Billy a stuffed bear with a black ribbon on it, Grover wonders if Chao Ting has called. And when Ginger says no and tries to convince him to go to a different cleaner, he insults her and makes her leave. Grover decides that Chao Ting is punishing him, but insists that Chao Ting will fall under line. Sam Longshma calls, and Chao Ting has not picked up his laundry either. Grover missed her breaking the rules and calling Chao Ting, but insists Chao Ting will fall in line. Longshma gets upset, calls, and disconnects the phone after telling Grover that he blew it. Groper starts obsessing about Chao Ting. He keeps assuring himself that Chao Ting needs him as much as he needs Chao Ting. He then comes to what he thinks is a realization. He calls Chao Ting and leaves an answering message. Where he, when he refers to Chao Ting simply as Chao, say, says that he realizes that Chao Ting wants his soul and offers his soul freely as long as he comes and gets the laundry. Ginger comes in and tells Groper that Sam Longchma is dead. She leaves. Groper feels guilty because he did not tell Sam Longchma that Chao Ting was interested in souls. He then buzzes Ginger and has her buy as much stock in Sam Lanchman's company and has her arrange a de date with Lanchman's newly widowed wife. He insists it is okay because Sam is dead and Groper is not. Lanchman's widow calls and tells Groper that Lanchman committed suicide by jumping out of an 86 story building. Groper finally gets a call. And insists that he's not interested in shouting. Gets a call from Chao Ting and insists that Groper that he is not interested in Groper's soul. Chao Ting says he is not even interested in laundry anymore. He tells Groper that he won the lottery, closed his shop, and is retiring to Florida with his wife. Chao Ting thanks Groper for his patronage and says he hopes Groper takes the news of his retirement much better than Lanchma did. Groper realizes that with everything he has done, he will not be able to live with the sins and guilt. He throws himself out of his office window committing suicide. Now this episode, it is one of my favorites, and for that, my rating is um, 9 out of 10. The reason, it, it, it doesn't start slow, it makes you wonder like the setting and who is this man and why is he in Chinatown, where, where does this take place, and it, it just makes you guess. And when, you, when the Sam Groper meets uh, Chow Teen, you know, it, it's a laundry service by the window. So you wonder, okay, he's going to do his laundry, but this I tell from the Dark Side episode, so what is the catch? And the catch is that Chow Teen can wash away sins out of the laundry. Sam Groper, he says he's, it says he's a businessman, you know, like a corporate type, but I think he's like in the mafia too. Because, you know, he ordered a hit on his son's, I don't know if it was his friend or some son's little friend, his dad. And, you know, a normal person wouldn't do that. So he ordered a hit on them. And he told his son that stop crying, it builds character, act like me. And he also told him that if you take off Billy's nose, I'll double your allowance. So right away you come across this guy that uh groper that he's a he's kind of a dick and he really doesn't give a give a give a fuck about anybody or anyone i mean he gave his wife thorny flowers on her birthday and then divorced her and you never really know about sam launchmont you just hear his voice i'm assuming maybe he might be in the mafia too maybe he's just like a normal corporate -y guy but, you know, he, he told him about Chao Ting, Groper, so uh, you know, obviously, he's done some sin, Sam. So, not everybody is, you know, like, um, not everybody's good in this episode, except for Chao Ting. 
and then you as the story progresses uh groper just starts doing more like crazy ballsy things like dating sam launch mom's like having sex rendezvous with her and then um having sex with billy's mom after he murdered his fault her after after the groper murdered her husband who's billy's father and he just keeps getting ballsy and ballsy and ballsier but then you see he's starting to break when you know the laundry's piling up nobody's coming chatting ain't coming he's starting to break he's like well, what's going on or you know and then he he breaks the, one of the rules he calls Teen, and you're not supposed to do that so he breaks that rule doesn't get a response calls him again leaves him a voicemail says hey chow you know if you want my soul come and get it it's free but then after that call finally Teen calls and he says no I'm not interested in your soul dude um I won the lotto I'm not doing that no more. I hope you took it well, better than Sam Launchmont did, because Sam Launchmont, as you heard from the previous act, he committed suicide by the dumping, jumping off an 86-story building, because he couldn't handle the fact that Chow Ting won the lotto and he wasn't gonna be able to do the laundry no more. So all this laundry was piling up, and then Groper finally breaks and says, "Oh, I can't live with all this guilt, all this sin," and then he jumps out of the building, and commits suicide. So this is a real good episode. Like I said, it's nine out of ten. The cast was very amazing, and um, I thank you for watching. You know the quarantine's still going on. You know I want all you guys to be safe, and comment and subscribe if you like this video. Again, this is one of my favorite episodes, and thank you for watching my Tales from the Dark Side review of It All Comes Out on the Wash.